Hey guys, got Malik Mason here, and I got some uh, exciting news, or at least it is to me. So, um, most of, most of the time I follow this uh, the Call of Duty stuff, like I always do, and I just found this out due to an article I read on Treyarch's Facebook, because you know Treyarch's the next, or is the team the developer that's developing the next Call of Duty game, which is Black Ops 3, and this actually made me like psyched for it because you know what we have not had this happen in a long time they are releasing a comic book for Black Ops 3 the official comic prequel to Black Ops 3 is what they call it and it'll and this is the article this is from IGN which is another great um, website that I like to follow for like stuff like cheats and whatnot Okay, on November 4th, Dark Horse Comics will be releasing a Call of Duty Black Ops 3 prequel comic book by writer Larry Hama, or Hama, G.I. Joe, and artist, and that was his previous work, and artist Marcelo Ferreira, Transformers and TMNT, was his, uh, former work. Um, I wish I could show you the pictures, but I really can't for some reason. Anyway, a prequel to the highly anticipated game, the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 comic book series, follows an elite group of soldiers as they wage a secret war across a futuristic, war-torn world transformed by technology. Dark Horse detailed in a press release, in the bullet-ridden first issue, the team infiltrates Tashkent, Uzbekistan, to take down a double agent, but as they close in, they uncover something much more sinister at hand. Fans can pick up a free Black Ops 3 exclusive mini comic at San Diego Comic Con next week by stopping at either the Dark Horse Comics booth, which is number 2615, or the Activision installation. Hama or Hama, however you pronounce his name, it's like the Sky Cawthon of comic books, um, has worked on Dark Horse's G.I. Joe comics over the years, so his experience writing fictionalized military stories makes him a fit for this new Call of Duty makes, or Call of Duty comic. He told us that while he has played Modern Warfare a bit, he is no longer able to play video games because of some nasty arthritis. If you guys don't know what that is, that's what, I'm not saying you guys are stupid, but it's like where your joints lock up and they can't move as well. But fear not, he was a first-person shooter fan and was, or and has worked on Wolverine's Revenge for Activision, so he knows a thing or two about video games. A lot of the appeal for Call of Duty is in how it puts you directly in the action. That's pretty difficult to replicate in a graphic story format, so the aim in a comic book adaptation is to provide more of what you don't get a lot of in the game, Hama said. We're talking character development and backstory, and a more involved personal interaction uh, between the characters. Also, it's possible to really flesh out the story and create, create running subplots and explain technical details that aren't easy to convey in the game environment. There will also be a Black Ops 3 Zombies World Reveal panel at San Diego Comic-Con on Thursday, July 9th from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 video game is due to come out November 6th of 2015, just two days after the comic book hits. So, I, I can't get you... I could try and get a picture, but I don't know if, um, how to really show it unless I uh, took a picture, which I kind of should have done. But um, if you guys don't believe me, you can always check the um, Treyarch's um, Facebook page. Uh, or you could go and for more information you could press that little link down on their Facebook page where it, it says Comic Con Dark Horse deploys Call of Duty Black Ops 3 comic books. So why am I flipping out about this? Well, we haven't seen a comic book since, like, for a, in a Call of Duty franchise since Ghosts. And Ghosts to me was a great comic book. It gave me depth 
like it explained to me why he was called Ghost and why he wore the skull mask. That's that's why he's one of the most favored like character in the franchise. Not saying he's the top one, but he's one of the like big ones that everybody's like, oh, that's Ghost. That's Ghost. Let's all follow him. That sort of thing. Um, but when it comes to like actual expanded universe, like books and stuff, this isn't like the first time we've seen it like this. But um. I mean, it's good that they have, like, more comic books, and I really hope that they last a little longer. Not saying that Ghost was a disappointment, but six stories, man. I want to see at least, like, ten, maybe. And hopefully, if they, when they do make it, it'll be easy to buy on the internet. But, and this is another good thing about it. Uh, the difference between Modern Warfare 2 Ghost and um, Black Ops 3's comic book is that they're made by... Dark Horse, which is a more familiar and more active comic book series than Wildstorm was. Wildstorm is gone. It's now owned by um, DC Comics, which made it even difficult to find. But, um, yeah, I really, I'm really looking forward to this. Like, I want to know when the story will take place and all that other stuff. But uh, this hasn't been the first time we've had, like, written novels or graphic novels based on the franchise. We've had Ghost being the first one to date to record. And then later, as time progressed, um, 2011 came around. They had Soap's Journal, which gave us, like, his, like, depiction of his, freak, his like, battles between... Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare, all the way up to Modern Warfare 3. Um, Black Ops 2 with The Rightful King, giving us a little more background as to why Raul Menendez hated us, the U.S., and then later went after Mason and Woods in Black Ops 2. Um, and then, of course, you've got Devil's Breath, which explains to us how the Federation broke Captain Gabriel Rourke in Ghosts, because... Everybody said, oh, well, a ghost never breaks. Well, be in his shoes, being locked up in a pit with bullet ants and stuff like that come after you. Um, the GK Nova 6, that wasn't really written content, 10, but it was, like, promotional. It had all these different little snit nitpicks of different events, like secrets and stuff that, you know, had to be, like, fully, like, uh, what's the word for it? like, looked over a couple of times just to finally get what they were saying. And then, of course, if you count this one, and I do, I kind of wish I could have gotten the, you know, pre-order version. I don't think that's available now, but the Atlas journal, like, tells them how they got their big success and whatnot. But um, that'll be fun. Also, like they said in this, this time, Treyarch's trying something a lot different. This time, normally, we don't get... Like, they're releasing, like, the zombie release July 9th. And why is this such a big deal? Well, we don't necessarily get zombies' information for their new game. Like, unless it's, like, around, like, school time, like, September or October. That's when we start to get it. To see them actually showing us this in July makes me think, hmm, maybe that we're going to get a much better zombie experience. Hopefully they can go back to the simplicity of Easter eggs for, like, when it was great in Black Ops 1 and World at War, because then they were easy and they made sense to go after them instead of having to walk back and forth across the map, which kind of got annoying. And I also could never, we could never complete them because you needed, like, I hate to say it, professionals to play it. And they only play that, like, once or twice. Then after that, they just say, we're done. We did it already. We don't need to do it. So, um, but then, before I end this video, it also makes me question what's going to happen to Black Ops 3. Because if this is supposed to take place 40 years after Black Ops 2... Um, like, how is that going to incorporate Black Ops 2, st like, storyline? Because they had multiple endings, like, 
You could kill Menendez or like spare Menendez and depending on what you did on your other missions he will stay locked up or he will get out, kill Woods, then kill himself. So, like, does it really depend on what you did for that or no? Also, we got some, I don't know if you consider some of them new developers, but let me just uh, look it up for a moment. So, Black Ops 3, of course, developed by Treyarch for the next gen, because for some reason they just kind of gave up on the old gen, like, oh, we don't have that software anymore. So, we got this new character, or these new teams called Mercenary Technology, which will be working on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 version, as well as Beanox, also working for the same thing. Now, I looked at Beanox's Facebook profile, and I think it's all in Spanish, or I don't really know what language it's in, but I don't um, know what that what they're trying to say. I'm not saying that they're gonna be bad developers. It's just like wow, like I've never seen a developer for any Call of Duty game where they speak fluent, like full blown, instead of like having it in English, which isn't a problem. And then Mercenary Technology, um, I've never actually heard of them before. I went and looked at their website. Um, but I don't need my glasses anymore. They were founded in 2010. They've been making video games for a while, but, you know, they weren't as big. It's like some of the other stuff, but they're now the primary developers for the Call of Duty franchise and whatnot, which is going to be pretty awesome. Um, I don't know if Raven Software is going to do it, because, I mean, they've worked with, um, like, Ghosts, Black Ops, like Modern Warfare 3, um, they're working on online with Tencent, and they've done Advanced Warfare. Also, they're from my con er, from my state, which makes it even like special. They're not special for me, but it's like wow, small world. I because normally I thought that they would all be developed by a game developer headquartered in California, but this one. It's actually headquartered in my state capital, actually. But I digress. Um, so that's what's going to happen. I'm looking forward to it. I really hope that they do real good on this, because I like these kind of games. Like, <sighs> Sorry. They've been, like, great when it came to, like, certain stuff, and that's why I like what they do, so maybe that'll, like, it'll be great to see what they're going to incorporate in Black Ops um, 3, but I also have some other questions to add on with it, so if you guys have seen Ali A's channel, which, if you guys are Call of Duty fans, you most likely follow his channel, or at least one of the big Call of Duty gamers out there, um, because they have like their channel is dedicated to both gameplay and news for the upcoming COD games and um, they, you have these specialists now specialists are characters you can play in play as in multiplayer and I honestly don't mind the specialist thing but I wonder if they're still going to have like that thing where in Ghosts and in Advanced Warfare you can customize your character or not I, I mean I, I didn't have a problem with it I didn't like see it peel to it but I didn't see anything wrong with it but um anyway I also had questions because I have looked at some of the wiki like characters and I know it's a wiki but most of the time the wiki has not been wrong yet and I'm saying yet because you know it's a wiki nonetheless and they have all these different like factions that they're affiliated with and seeing how as of now we can only see them in multiplayer I'm wondering if we're gonna have more than two char like two f multiplayer factions like we've had in Ghosts and in Advanced Warfare it would be nice because I actually liked more factions like it gave you an idea of like who you're fighting against and who are your allies like who are the good guys and who are the bad guys in the entire story 
like if you played Black Ops 2, your char like the good ones were SEAL Team 6, SEALs, ISA, FBI. Um, I, I think there's another team. Um, can't remember what it is, though. Eh, forget it. And then you had the Mercs, the Militia, and the SDC, and all that stuff, which, again, makes it great. I like more, like, enemy teams and stuff. I like more teams. It's what makes me good, or feel good. Also, we do now have confirmation that Black Ops faction will be returning to Black Ops 3, which is great. Um, I also see the 54 Immortals and all these other, like, factions, but, again, like, are they going to all be in these factions? Like, as a matter of fact, let me look at the characters. Like, they don't all have different, like, affiliations. They're all affiliated to the same team for some reason. Like, again, because it's a specialist, and they kind of work as mercenaries. But, um, we look, there's the 54 Immortals, which is the Crime Syndicate, Black Ops, CIA, CDP, the Nile River Coalition, and the Winslow Accord. Now, that's one, two, three, four, five, six factions. Just like a previous, like, Black Ops 2, I believe? Yeah. Um, are there going to be six factions? And if they are, like... Obviously, you can probably think of, like, maybe that Black Ops and the CIA would be considered the good guys, but and the 54 Immortals would be the bad guys because they're the crime syndicate, and they are a real crime syndicate. They're stationed in Singapore, or that's where they originated. But then you have the CDP, Nile River Coalition, and the Winslow Accord. Now, Winslow Accord may possibly be the good guys, considering if you've seen the world release demo of Black Ops 3 and you play as Winslow characters but you have the Black Ops like multiplayer faction logo on your chest or your s arm patch maybe considering that either he's a mercenary or he's just working like a joint op with the Winslow so you know that's a possibility um other than that, I think we're good. Um, again, so, super pumped for, like, the comic book stuff, because I'm big on this stuff. I, you should see my collection of Call of Duty memorabilia. I have the book. I have a couple of their games. Even um, bought two of their mobile, or I should say four, actually. Like, the zombies, the two zombies iOS games, and strike team and heroes on my phone and all that other great stuff because regardless whether or not people see it as being too repetitive now and not appealing I, I'm a huge Call of Duty fan and I I kind of want to give them the benefit of the doubt considering like I know it, it's again a futuristic war and a war that doesn't exist not saying that it can but it most likely won't um, but, you know, hopefully this won't be a constant phase because, honestly, I didn't see a problem with it when Black Ops 2 came out, but then, you know, the futuristic thing became too repetitive, and like many players, it, it looked a lot like Titanfall. I know. But, hopefully they won't make this a constant phase because, honestly, I, I do kind of get sick and tired of it, and at least... In modern war, the more uh, modern warfare franchise, they it was it was a war like in the future sort of, but it wasn't that far from the present day as well. Considering that they used present day weapons like the M4, the M16, all the stuff, and they had you know like real time scenarios like when it, uh, Modern Warfare 2 based on my from my point of view, based on the Afghanistan war and Call of Duty 4 based on the Iraq war. Um, so that's what, how I stand on this um, and whatnot. But 
again, I still hope they can go back after this and either do another like historic game based on World War One, considering how a majority of the characters throughout the entire franchise alone were involved in World War One, like characters from Call of Duty Three, the main zombie characters. Or do you want to Kore on the Korean War, regardless whether or not the war is technically not over, but because you have three characters from Black Ops who are all involved in that war and all met each other during that war for the first time. Or go back to World War II because there were plenty of other battles that were extremely important, like Iwo Jima, not to mention the missions that they had originally planned in some of their games but eventually scrapped for unknown reasons which would have been great like the Holland invasion operation market garden that that would have been great cuz uh, I'm into the band of brothers sort of stuff right now and they were the airborne not not that there isn't enough airborne game based first-person shooters already, but, you know, I, I like that sort of thing. And I liked when they incorporated it with real-time events, like, like, for a while it was meant to be made as an honor thing, and we all can thank Steven Spielberg for that, because without his idea of saying, hmm, we should make a video game based on actual events during World War II, we probably would have never had games like these, like, World War II games, or games based on actual wars that we fought in. Like, um, what's it called? Like, he's the whole reason, or one of the reasons why the first Medal of Honor came out, because he's like, we need to, we should see that, but then people were like, no, no, we'll stick to our, our fake realities, like fallouts, um, nuclear war, and all that other stuff, or James Bond spying and all that, and he's like, no, we, we should try it, we should try make a World War II game. And it worked. As a matter of fact, it used to be like, the top selling number one game for, for anything, basically, that, that's what made it great. And I like those games, I collect them, I have some of the, like, early PlayStation 2 copies for the Call of Duty games like Big Red 1 and Finest Hour and I'm looking for Final Fronts to end my collection for PlayStation 2. So I'm going to end it now because I've let myself ramble on too much as per usual. So I'm going to end it here. I'm uh, Captain Alex Mason and I'll see you guys next time.